where we're going to hit certain areas. And, sorry, I just ran over here. Um, go over opening, closing procedures, running side work, dish pit stuff. And then we're at the very end, we're going to read through the steps of service, word for word, so we can um, go through verbiage and all that good stuff while everyone's here. Questions? No? Okay. Well, let's get started. So we'll... I guess we, just, we can start from here, so you guys can stay seated for right now. So, this is the main bar of the clubhouse, and this is our lounge area. Um, on this covered patio, we have a whole one cafe that's not currently set up. That is one of the snack bars that we have. Um, that is a fast casual grab and go with soup, sandwiches, chili, stuff like that. Allevi alleviates a lot of pressure off the kitchen during the day, and that is our only breakfast option since we removed all of our breakfast. Um, so that's eight to five daily. This double-sided covered patio is our hottest commodity for seating um, over summer. There's heaters on top that screens roll down. So this side is 70s, the other side are 60s. Um, we'll go more into depth for server training and all the table numbers and all that stuff. But for the table numbers and seat numbers in here, this is L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven and eight, the two top. And then the bar seats wrap starting where Herman is all the way around. So we'll start at 13 and loop all the way around. Um, we'll have more bar seating because they're just a little scattered at the moment. So Luke would be sitting in seat one, two, three, four. So when you're choosing your table numbers, as you look north and it's the one to the right. So Sydney, you're in one, two, three, four. Iris is in seat one, and Marley's in two, three, four, five, six. Does that all make sense? Cool. All right. Um, we'll go outside really quick, because I want to show you guys the outside server station. This server station over here has uh, water glasses, one of the server stations for lunch. It's made, uh, used a lot during the day, as well as this one. And then in the cupboards, you'll find some pepper shakers and other stuff that you may need for service. Perfect, and we'll go outside. <laughs> uh, these are all the tables. This is what actually it'll look like over summer. We just staged it right before all of you guys got here. So uh, starting with 70. It goes all the way to 71, 72, 73, 74. Same thing on that side, starting with 60 and onwards. This lovely server station behind is called the hole. So if you ever hear us referring to the hole, this is what this is. So we'll use it to store extra equipment. Um, we'll set up a wine station for service uh, during for dinner service with Vivro bottles as well, which is the waters that we use to fill the water glasses. Um, and then that turns into a bar well for on Fridays when we do cool downs. Um, that's where all of the dinner service drinks will come out of as well. Cool. And then right behind you, you've got the driving range with the view of the peaks. And we got bocce ball courts over there where that other furniture is. As you can see, it is a beautiful place to sit. So this goes very quickly over summer. There's always a standing bottle and towel in there. I make sure the standing's new every day. You guys can keep on, like, we're just gonna all walk through. Uh, just watch out because of there's some wires and stuff. So, in here, we'll have like white our white wine cooler and a bunch of glassware, obviously. And behind you, we have some beers and our sodas. And then, if you ever need to go stuff, there's always uh, paper goods down there. This is one of our wells. This is the main well that most servers are going to be picking up their drinks from. This is where it's all going to be set up. Uh, we're going to stab your tickets. Yeah, you stab your ticket in this thing right here. A little more glassware. This one keeps our glasses <coughs> cold. Martini glasses, margarita glasses, beer glasses. Uh, this well we don't open up all the time, but we will, especially for cool downs and anytime we have a really big event happening where we need to be just like throwing out drinks to people. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt really quick. This is the server well. So in service, this is where you're going to pick up all your drinks. 
Um, the bartenders are very aware when the tickets are printing. Please do not hound them um, for whatever reason. If the printer is just going off, come grab me and then I'll handle it with them. I just don't want any animosity between anybody. And it's very, very important to not touch their tickets unless your drink is over your ticket. That means it's ready. If there's no drinks over the ticket, it is not ready. Please do not touch it and it will get messed up. That is the only time you're allowed to touch the ticket and stab it. If you do not stab it, the bartenders will make the drink again. It's kind of annoying when that happens, not gonna lie. So just keep that in mind as well. Yeah. Um, we have our beers that are on the <coughs> right here. Um, usually, we always have six. Yeah, so there's gonna be one of them. The rest on the board over there. I think we're keeping them this next summer, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, here's another well that we're gonna have. This is kind of for a more like a, another service well, but. Uh, drinks are coming out to servers on this side. This is kind of where someone else will be making drinks for people sitting at the bar. And right here on the little <coughs> shelf thing, it's every single liquor that we're gonna have. It'll always be filled up with bottles. Um, keep coming this way. And this is where we're gonna get into our cleaning station. So <coughs> still some more clean glassware. This is a lot work. maybe something that doesn't get dried or hand dried right away. That's where you'll set it to dry off. A lot of just, this is more kind of for bartenders. <coughs> this is all your little gadgets and whatnot for setting up the bar. Here we have like a rotating, pretty quick uh, washing machine that you'll just stick your glasses in and then we'll polish them on this guy here. A lot of people haven't really seen this one before, but ever. it's super awesome. Makes polishing so much easier, blows out some hot air, rotating little spinny guys and it makes your life so much easier. Um, but here's where you're gonna come in, like you'll set your dirty glasses down here. We'll have, most of these chairs, will, probably these last two will be gone. So you'll be setting your gla dirty glasses here, whatnot. Um, usually we prefer not people not come behind the bar. Sometimes like if it's super duper full, you can come and set them down here as well. Um, but you know, there's already gonna be probably three bartenders behind here at all times, so adding any more foot traffic is just gonna make things crazy. Just go ahead and put your <coughs> drinks always on the counter. Yeah. Don't go back there and it's just gonna get people to bump into each other. Just yeah. put your dirty glasses here. For whatever reason you don't have room, just come grab me, I'll figure it out. But just try and stay out of their way because it gets really tight back there with that. And then lastly, this is another dishwasher here. So we can be doing as a lot of glasses at once because sometimes we'll be having cool down, wedding, just a dinner service. So there's so much glassware that needs to be getting cleaned at once that, you know, you just gotta keep up on it. Uh, and this is our last cool little gadget here. It's a wine keeper. So it's gonna, it has, is it, I think it's, nit what kind of gas goes into it? Nitrogen. See, nitrogen gas. So it'll keep the wine that you, you can open up the bottle, stick it in there, and then it'll keep the wine for about two to three weeks, which is nice and so we're not always having to recycle bottles. And as you can see, we have a lot of wines by the glass, so you'll definitely get to learn those for sure. I don't think this is open, but this is our liquor closet. So extra sodas, extra alcohol, um, all that kind of stuff is gonna be back here. And yeah. Perfect. All right, we'll have everyone loop around this way. Holy reds, which is amazing. Goes from light body to full, pinot to cab. And then we have a white wine cooler in the kitchen as well that we'll show you in a little bit. And then in here is our dining room. It is messy right now. We are still currently doing construction while having our tables and chairs furnished as well. So it won't necessarily look like this, but similar S. Um, these lockers right here, so we have a wine club. Members can pay an annual fee to be part of that wine club. We do wine dinners once a month over here, so it's very exclusive. It's only 50 people, first come, first serve. Um, so that's something that's a little fun. We do about four courses paired with uh, wine for each course. They can store their own wine in these lockers and we can open them during dinner, which is really awesome, as long as it's not on our list. And we just charge a corkage fee. And then on that back wall, we'll be building more lockers before a season as well. So that's a fun little program that we do. And then over here, we have wines by the glass wine station. So we'll do this during dinner service to uh, help servers just get your drink very quickly and so take some pressure off the bartenders as well. So we'll do reds and whites by the glass and then same in front of the hole as well. Awesome.
All righty. So this is downstairs. Uh, we have our admin offices over here. So if you ever need to see Robin, her office is in there as well. You just turned off the lights. Oh, there you go. Um, these are all of our past board presidents. Mr. Kate Hill is our current board president, and this is our current board. I would familiarize yourself with your faces and names. They are important people. All of them are very, very nice people. All righty. Um, down this hall is the board meeting room, and then on the left is the committee, committee meeting room. So feel free to pop your head in there and check it out. Some of you will be helping with setting up meetings and breaking it down. So those are the two meeting rooms that we'll be talking about, but feel free to walk, go check it out. And you can rent any of these books as well. Just come talk to me if you want to check them out. <laughs> so this is the car barn. So right out that garage door is if you walk up to the right is the covered patio. And to the left is the roundabout right there. That's where people do their backdrops and all that good stuff. Um, right behind me, these are the bibs, the bag and boxes I was telling you about for the syrups for the sodas and all of our CO2 tanks and nitrogen tanks as well. And then right around that corner is the keg cooler that I would like all of you to see. Very important, if the door is ever propped open in the slightest bit, it will freeze everything in there. And it will not be fun to deal with. So, if you're ever in the keg cooler, just make sure you close the door all the way. Very important. But go ahead and open it and check it out. We got white wine in here, beer, eggs, water, here. That's nice. MTV, welcome to my cribs. <laughs> 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 yeah, in here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness, you had that. No, no. <laughs> Boys rule, girls rule. I feel so happy. I feel so said a lot of the bridal parties will take over and some of you would be running champagne, food, hors d'oeuvres, whatever back and forth. Um, it a surely take over this. I will promise you that there's shoes everywhere, clothes, it's amazing. Like a yes. <laughs> um, this is also member bathrooms. Normally I don't like anyone using member bathrooms during the season unless it's a dire emergency. Absolutely, that's fine, I get it. And I'll show you where the employee bathroom is because there's only one so they're like you kind of annoying and there's also one outside that's meal area so that set up right there is where meal will be down here every day from 11 to 2 so if you're working during the day this is where you're going to eat along with these benches so you can pull share lockers you're more than welcome to claim one and put a lock on it totally up to you um, I have never heard any issues of people stealing from each other and I've been here for a long time so I think it's safe to say that it's okay and if I find out otherwise oh, you're not going to be happy that's all I gotta say all right, so right around this corner as well is the employee bathroom. So this is where you'll go. There's also one right outside. Like I said, if it's an emergency, feel free to use it. Just members in there, maybe just wait if you can. If not, I get it. All right, I'm gonna go upstairs.
stroke, need to take a break, whatever it may be, this is kind of your area. Um, when you are taking a break or you need to smoke, whatever, I'm totally chill with that. One of the cigarettes, try and not smell when you come back in, whether it's washing your hands, mouthwash, all that good stuff. But also while you're out here, be conscious of like how long you're out here because your team's inside doing other stuff. So just be aware, we're all a team. I want everyone to, you know, take their breaks, that's fine, but just be consciously aware of how many times you're coming out here for how long. Cool. Okay. So, uh, these big blue bins, that's where you're going to put your dirty linen bag, and it's usually going to be on the side of the back dock. So, you'll just walk on the back dock and chuck it in there. And this is our lovely back dock. So, this is where all the food deliveries are. Um, I really, really want to keep this area clean over summer, so if we can all work together as a team to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, trash builds up back here, dumpsters will overflow, all that lovely things. So many people come in and out of here, so I just want to try and keep it clean and organized. So if you see a piece of trash, just you can pick it up, that'd be awesome. Um, this tent is full of kitchen equipment along with extra catering tables. The bleaker box on the other side is also kitchen equipment. We've got our lots of dumpsters and recycling. steering so just get it rolling and then turn that's the easiest way to do it <laughs> all right so this lovely bleaker box is our paper goods so anything paper related ramekins silverware napkins you name it it's gonna be here or in dry storage in the kitchen which we will show you in a little bit um, and I'll also show you the procedures of when something's running low. Please tell me, or we're out of, tell me the expos, and then I'll show you where you can write it on um, a sheet as well so we can order more and not run out in the middle of service. That is not super fun. Um, and then this bleaker box is full of extra catering, catering equipment as well. So feel free to pop your heads in and then we'll walk to the garages. set of garages right in front of us that is our three sets of garages um, there's one, the first set right over here those are member garages so please don't go near those those are the garages for these houses over here and please don't park in front of them I made that mistake don't do it The first garage that you see is full of more catering equipment and it is jam-packed right now. I will open it so you can see. Um, it will probably be a little bit less when season comes and then we knock down this wall for these two garages so now it's one big garage and some of us reorganized it yesterday which was awesome. This is all sodas, uh, ginger beer, tonic, stuff like that. The entire back wall is solely liquor. And then our wine cabinet plus another wine cabinet. So you can, this is a lot, just wait till season starts. This is jam packed. It took us actually not that long yesterday. I'm very proud of it. It looks so good. I'm like, what? Right? It looks totally <laughs> different. 
So, uh, yes, a lot of you will probably be coming in here. Lots and lots of good stuff. Everything's pretty much organized as it should. And that's why we have our carry-all, so we can go back and forth. All right, so we're going back into the kitchen. This lovely thing is a freezer right here. If you hear people knocking, that means they're gonna come out, so stand clear, because they swing open these doors like no tomorrow. <coughs> this is one of our linen racks. This is usually where all the roll-up linens will be, some tablecloths as well. And brooms are out here also. Uh, just stand in the hallway, because we're gonna go over dry storage and coolers and whatnot. So if you ever hurt yourself, first aid kit, you got ibuprofen, aspirin, antacid, you name it, band-aids, uh, finger condoms. Does everyone know what a finger condom is? So if you cut yourself, put a band-aid on it, and then you put a finger condom on so the band-aid doesn't fall anywhere and gross somebody out, because that's not going to be fun. That's kind of gross. Um, but yes, everything you need, burn stuff, whatever you need, is in here. And please, if you ever have an accident, just tell me even if you think it's not super important. I need to know those things just to make sure everyone's good. Uh, right behind Herman is our dry storage, which is a little messy at the moment. Um, all the chefs kind of threw everything in there at the moment. Um, it's not? Oh, it looks a lot better than yesterday. Wow. Um, so if you need uh, sugar, condiments, uh, more paper goods, so I would look in here first when you run out of paper goods. If it's not in here, and then go outside. And then if you could restock it and bring it inside, that would be ideal, so we don't have to run back and forth. Um, yeah, so cooler three. This is where you're gonna find juice and produce, and these ones are lighter than the freezer door, so if you hear this, stay clear. They're gonna swing it out, and if you're going in here, please say, you know, communicate when we're in the kitchen or in the dining room, behind, in front, corner, all those things, like repeat it, say it loud so no one runs into each other, super, super important. It's chaotic and busy and loud. And then cooler two is gonna find all your dairy and your prep. And then we have our handy dandy orange juice machine right behind us. Um, <laughs> so we only really use this machine for events in Cassie's Cafe, which is our little bagel shop that we do every Saturday and Sunday morning. Um, it is very fragile and very expensive, so that's why we try not to move it as much. Um, very important, when you open it in here, there is a basket. When you are using it, please put a trash bag in there because when the oranges fall and there's no trash bag in it, it turns into a giant mess and it is not fun cleaning up. So always do that. Um, Ethan, our expo is really good at this. All, all of us kind of know how to take it apart. It's pretty simple um, and you can run everything to, through dish for the most part, which is really nice. But I won't go into super detail today because it's kind of rare, but we'll use it for like Mother's Day, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so the idea was, use it, idea was to use it a lot more, but it's kind of fragile. So here we go. All right, moving on to the dish pit. So this is our lovely dish pit. I'm just having to move over so I'm going to show you something. There you go. So uh, new health code. So I'm going to put racks on the bottom of the floor. Tape them. Do not move. We need to put all the glass racks on the racks on the floor, and they need to be about three inches above the floor for health code. So that's really important. I haven't changed all of it yet, but this is what it should look like. This bus tub is for glass. When it breaks, please do not put glass in the regular trash because someone's going to take it out and cut themselves and it's just going to turn into much more than it should. As well as the dump bucket. So any liquids, this is where you're going to put all the liquids. When you are busing um, your china and glassware, please scrape everything off the plates and ramekins. It is one of my biggest pet peeves seeing ramekins full of butter, ketchup, ranch, you name it. It takes two seconds just to bang it on the side of the trash can, get everything out, because the dishwashers are washing dishes for the entire clubhouse when there's like five different events going on, service going on, so let's try and make their lives easier because we're all one team, even though it's front and back, we're all one team. Glass racks, no bar glasses should be coming back here. All, all bar glasses should be going taken back to the bar. These are for juice glasses and water cups, as well as coffee and tea. 
So when the glass rack is full, all you have to do is turn it over like so. That's when the dishwashers know it's full and they can run it through. And when we're stacking plates and all that good stuff, let's try and match it to that plate so it doesn't turn into an overflow of nonsense. And that bus tub is all for utensils as well. All right, so back here in this corner, uh, when you need sanitizer and filling up your sanitizer bottles, there was a rack in the hallway where all the cleaning supplies is for chemicals. If you ever need a spray bottle, that's where you're gonna find the spray bottle. So this is for our pots and pans. This one back here is for sanitizer. So all you gotta do is press the red button. It's gonna go, go, go. And then when you want it to stop, just pull it super, super easy. Cool. Awesome. And like I said, when you're back here, just stay behind. It gets slippery, so just be careful. Um, anything related ice, this is our ice bin right here. So all drinking water, ice, buffets, all that good stuff. We're gonna get it all from right here. And we will have um, ice bins over here as well as by the coffee over there. All right, so we're gonna move this way. This is chef's office as well. Most of us will not be in this area because there are so many chefs here during the day. It just kind of gets physically impossible to be back here. Um, if you are back here, just try to be quick and out of everyone's way. It'll look a little chaotic, more chaotic than it really is. Um, pastry corner back here as well. And then moving into the catering closet. Chandler, take it away. Yeah. Uh, so most of you came back here during the last training, uh, but this is gonna be the catering closet, or I guess this is a catering service area. We really, as front of house servers or snack bar people, uh, pretty much unless you're in catering, you're really not gonna use this area too much. Obviously, you're welcome to use the sink. Um, and then this is gonna be what's called the Queen Mary, uh, kind of a funky name. I don't know why it's named that. Uh, but if someone just says go grab this from the Queen Mary, that's going to be it or take something to it. Uh, but again, generally, we're not going to use this too much as like servers and snack bar people and such like that. Uh, really what I want to emphasize over here are these first three racks. Uh, these are going to be all of our front of house utensils, like uh, a broken crab cracker here. Uh, and then over here is going to be more like sauce dishes, uh, things for like peanuts, anything small, maybe salad bowls, uh, but we're gonna be using that a lot. And then this third bit, uh, rack is also gonna be just more plate dishes. Uh, that's gonna be used for like oysters, specialty desserts, specialty appetizers, uh, things of that nature. Um, and then the last rack I wanna point out is gonna be this rack over here. Uh, we're gonna use these baskets a lot for just different displays, whether it's putting roll-ups into or straws or uh, anything like that. And then for sure up here, we use these risers like all the time. If you notice our little snack station over there with the water and lemonade, water and lemonade on risers, you flip the other one over and we put snacks in it, right? So they're just pretty versatile and we use them all the time. So if someone says, go get a riser, it's gonna be something like this. Uh, and then lastly, here are cocktail tables. Uh, we use them quite often. We're always doing like Thirsty Thursdays and then we have like a cool down on Fridays and things like that. So we'll be pretty much taking these out and then putting them back away almost every day. Uh, so those are just the things I want to emphasize for the catering closet. And in addition to that, uh, it is really important for us to keep this area clean. Like this is a definitely a kind of an area where things start to go wrong in terms of feuds between catering and front of house service. It's really easy to put things back. This is the nicest the catering closet's ever been. So uh, we're really hoping it stays this way. So just put everything back where it's supposed to be. And we'll be in good shape. spot just to save extra work for later I know it might not seem it might seem longer at that moment but I promise it'll be worth it in the end cool alrighty we're gonna circle to the club room and then we're gonna go back into the kitchen Oh, that good 
stuff, opening, closing procedures, running side work. Um, and then from there, we will move on to reading our steps of service. So everyone brought their packets today, right? Money. <coughs> Ladies. Okay, cool. Um, so inside here, this is basically um, the kitchen server area. So I'm going to start off in this little corner. This is going to be where we have our wine buckets for all of the white wines when we do wine bottle service. Um, we have booster seats, and then we have high chairs as well. Um, so these were just wiped down. Um, it's really important to keep these clean. Just kids, a lot of germs everywhere. They make a mess when they eat food and everything. So um, keeping these clean is uh, really important, especially like you know if we forget it overnight, that food hardens. It's really disgusting. Um, but and we'll, uh, also have it as well as one of the opening or closing duties as a server as well. Right here is going to be where we keep our um, white bottles of wine. Um, so anything that's not already poured by the glass that we keep behind the bar, this is where we have it here. So like nice bottles of champagne um, and um, all the other ones that we have on our wine list as well. Right here is where you're going to find everything for coffee and tea service and as well as uh, brewing teas and coffees. Um, so starting up here we have um, tea boxes. We'll go more into it as we do server trainings, kind of how to build a tray for teas as well as coffees. Um, we have hot chocolate, we have teas, um, <laughs> we have sugar caddies. Um, this is a nicely filled one, um, fully stocked, so we try to keep it that way as well before every service. These are going to be coffee mugs, mostly just coffee served in these. If you want to do teas, we do the smaller ones. Right here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so cute! What? This is weird. I need to take a picture of this. <laughs> this is amazing. It's your face. Oh my god! That is the coolest thing it's that new machine that we were like wait, setting wait, up. Awesome. Oh yes. So yeah, coffee mugs, tea mugs over here. These are for little espressos. Um, mainly keep these behind the bar because that's where our espresso machine is. But um, we have more extra over here. So um, in these baskets right here is where we're gonna keep the coffee and tea bags. Underneath here, um, I would try to keep the boxes to refill these whenever we can, um, and then. As you saw before, we have the box of there also in dry storage or in the bleaker box. Um, so basically, there's just uh, many places to keep storage. That way, we're always stocked because the worst thing that can happen is that you need it in the middle of service and it's not there because no one did their opening or closing duty to stock it. So a very nicely stocked one will look like this. You can see it's like all upright and looking pretty. This one is poorly stocked. So like uh, the label, you can't even see it. Some are flipped over, not looking good. Um, so we will keep two baskets as well, one for tea or one for coffees. This is regular and decaf. Um, we make sure to read the label as well because they are all printed um, in the same font and everything. This one's just red, but sometimes it's not. So just make sure to keep it all organized. That way we don't accidentally brew something wrong. And the teas as well, we do green and black tea as well. Um, so, and then um, as far as the tea boxes go, we're also going to keep refill of like the little tea bags that we use um, for the individual tea service, but that will be here. Um, so moving on to the server station, um, we're going to have uh, to-go coffee and plastic cups as well. Um, we also like to use the plastic cups for um, kid drinks if they're like not old enough to handle the glassware yet. Right here, we're gonna have these cups. It's gonna be for soda and juices. Um, fill it up with ice, that's why they're a little bit bigger. This is going to be for water. For water, these are gonna be on all the tables in a um, full table setting. But those are just gonna be extra, so when you do polishing and everything, which Angela will go over in a second, um, that's where we wanna keep them, at least in this area. This is for the ice. We're gonna get the ice in these buckets. Um, usually we'll kind of keep a few over there as well, but about two of these will fill up this, and that should be good. Um, this is our soda machine. Um, it's in repair right now, but um, ideally we'll um, wash these uh, overnight, so it's a closing duty for the dinner staff to do. Um, we wash it overnight, and then in the opening, we'll put them back on, make sure it's all clean and everything. We also wash this as well. Um, moving on to 
This is our tea machine. We usually have two of these. One, I think, is just getting a new one or it's just being cleaned right now. But green tea, black tea. Uh, the most important thing about this really would probably be uh, knowing these two buttons. It is color coded, but um, it's also just kind of like if you're colorblind. Um, <laughs> There's the blue is just going to be on this left side and the uh, yellow is going to be on the right side. The water comes out of these spouts, so if you do this one but you meant to do this one, it's going to come out of this one anyways, so just be cognizant of that. Um, to do a full batch of tea, it only takes one tea bag. We always have our filters up here or they're, they're going to be in that um, little storage area that I showed you before, um, but one for teas. For coffees over here, um, we can do half batches or full batches. A half batch will only take one coffee bag, a full batch is two. If you ever forget that, we do also have it on our bulletin board. That's um, I'll go over there in a second, um, over what's on that, but um, we do have that written down in case you forget. Um, with that, you just need to worry about brew B, because it kind of just comes down the middle spout. Um, we'll always brew regular and decaf, and the for tea is always green and black tea. All right, lastly I'll go over is the Vivros. So if they row is the um, bottles of water that we use, so we keep them in this. Um, some of them are labeled with the fourth highlight, some are just like this, but um, this is where we get it. So it's our own filtering system. So it's, um, it's just really nice water. We have still here, and then we have sparkling here. Um, what bottle that you have is kind of based on like, what the little logo is on top. So we'll fill that up. We want to keep these full, keep them stocked in here that way they are cold so whenever we need it we can just grab it for the sparkling we will fill it up as we need it because it just makes sense why would you fill it up and then keep it overnight and it goes flat it's not sparkling water anymore so we just keep these cold and um, with the lid off as well so the bottle stays cold so when we fill it up it's still cold sparkling water um, but um yeah it's just important to not fill these up unless you need them for in the moment I'll go ahead and take over on each of ours. This is mostly going to be our expo line, but we do use almost all the products here. So I'll go ahead and start with the silverware. When it's in a green bucket, that means it needs to be polished. It has been ran through the dish, but we don't use silverware until we polish it. Once we polish it, it's going to go in a gray tray like this. And I'll go ahead and show you and give you an example. We do like to put it organized. So we have our knives and we have dinner forks and um, salad forks and the reason why we do that is it makes it a lot simpler when we're setting up or when we're making rolls. So this is where you're going to find all the silverware. We have plenty of extra bins. Um, like you can see we have a lot of polishing to do. So if you were to see something like this you would start polishing. Um, these are going to be our serving trays, what we bust on and what we serve food with. Um, part of opening and closing duties will always be lining the trays with linens like this. We do have two different kinds of trays. Ethan will go into those. Um, not only do we line them, but we also clean them. I'm gonna go ahead and give you an example. This would be an acceptable tray. This is gonna be an unacceptable tray. And that's gonna be every single day we clean those, lunch and dinner time. So twice a day, they should be clean. Where do we polish silverware, Angela? So yeah, there's gonna be multiple areas that we do our polishing. Um, we have silverware polishing and glassware polishing. I'll go over glassware. Um, we have a couple different areas depending what, um, if you're working lunch or dinner. Um, so sometimes for lunch, we will do our polishing in the dining room because we don't have people dining in there. There are a couple Saturdays that we do have people in there, so we can do polishing either over here if Expo gives us the approval to take up his area. Also, we can do polishing if it's really busy in the club room, in the dining room. We can go downstairs um, in our area. We can go ahead and do polishing down there, and that's going to be for silverware and glassware. We are also allowed to use the club room, like I mentioned, but again, we're going to go ahead and check first to make sure that there's no events. And also, a big thing with polishing in there is if there are linens on the table, we are going to remove the linen. They have special linens that sometimes they only have a certain amount, and so if we get them dirty, they're not gonna be able to go ahead and have that all set up and ready for their events. So it's really important to communicate whenever you're gonna be um, polishing anywhere. And also a big thing is since we do have a bunch of locations that you can hide out and do that, always let someone know where you're going in case we need you. So getting back to some trays, we also have our cocktail serving trays. Um, these are going to be used for cocktails only. And, and let's say, for example, you need to preset. You already cleared all their forks. They're gonna need another upcoming fork. You can use a tray for this. If you're gonna be carrying food, you are going to be using a bigger tray. That's a big thing. Managers will catch you on that if you don't. 
So with these, to clean them, we're gonna remove the top. We're going to clean both of them. So we have a couple of ways we clean these. About once a week, we're gonna run them through the dish pit. And then other times, morning and dinner, we're gonna just separate them, take the sandy bucket and a rag and clean it through. Example of an acceptable tray. Example of an unacceptable tray. They get sticky extremely fast, so it's very important we're cleaning them every day. This is gonna be some polished silverware. We do keep some stuff stocked here so that it's quick and go. Oh, I'm gonna need one extra spoon. I'm gonna put it on a napkin, put it on my tray. So we're gonna keep this already in set. These are gonna be some folding linens that are just easy grab for us. We'll show you further where the other linens are gonna be kept. And then we also have this tray here. It's a polishing tray. So what we put in here are linens that we consider dirty. So dirty linens are not gonna be used linens that we would throw in um, our linen bag. It's actually gonna be linens that you'll see they have um, stains on them from when they've been cleaned, kind of like um, you know markers, just dirt that doesn't get out in the washing process. We don't wanna uh, fold that or put that on the tables, but since it is technically a clean linen, we can use it to polish our stuff so we're not putting it to waste. And then also you're gonna have bags, to-go boxes up here. This is gonna be stuff for coffee and polishing. When you polish, you always fill one of these, not one of these, one of like a small one like this with hot water, and then we'll use the rag. And then I'll go ahead, oh, one more thing that I would like, Ethan's gonna go into more detail about this stuff, um, but although this is the expo station, we are using it just as much as the expos and the food runners are, so it's extremely important that we help them clean it and keep it stocked. These are all dry goods that we are going to be using. Uh, ramekins, sweeteners, soup, and, um, soup bowls, stuff like that, plates. Um, so it's just really important that we all work together as a team. I know this is an expo station. We are gonna try to stay out of their way, but when it comes to the side work, closing and opening, we are in charge of stocking just as much as they are. And then just one more thing right over here. I'll have you peep in right after I talk about it. This is where you're gonna find our glassware that needs to be polished. So whoever is doing dish, is going to be constantly running our glassware and putting it here when it's ready to be polished. It's very important, not just for opening and closing duties, but throughout your shift to be checking this. Even if you only have like five to 10 minutes, you can polish half a rack. Um, it's really important to always be checking this just so this doesn't get super bombarded, but also because we run out of glassware really quickly on busy days and busy nights. Um, another thing over here is this is where we are going to keep our drinks. This is the only location we will keep our drinks. You are not to keep your drinks on the expo line. You are not to keep your drinks in the server stations, at the bar. This is the only place to keep it. If you see it, we're gonna throw it out. It's very important to put your name on your cup so you're not you know, wasting it. Um, it's also really important to not put anything here other than drinks. No phones, no bags, nothing. You don't want it to be spilled on. Also, there's a staircase right here. This is heavily walked through. This planter is not gonna be here. Um, but drinks only, uh, this is where you're going to find your glassware, and that's about it for right here. Again, this is the walkway to go down to our room. Um, basically, using a plastic cup over your water bottle, please put a lid on it so you're safe from spills. And like I mentioned earlier with paper goods, if we're ever running low or are out, there is a clipboard here that will have sheets of paper that you will write what needs to be ordered. And for whatever reason, you're unsure or whatever, just ask me or any of the returners. We are all here to help you and support you, so do not be afraid to ask for help. Just this bulletin board, um, feel free to look at it more um, when you can, but we're just gonna, I'm just gonna briefly go over what's on it. We just have our uh, morning opening and closing duties. So if you are a lunch server, um, that is where you're gonna look to see what your duties are. There are gonna be like little names where it says captain. So um, whoever is the manager before or um, anything chooses who the captains are just to make sure like, you know, everything got done off that checklist before we open. And again, before all the lunch servers leave. Same thing with dinner. Um, we have the opening and the closing duties. Again, um, either Armand or another manager will probably assign those. That way um, everything gets done as well. It's just very important, but basically it's the same things you know, just making sure we're stocked, making sure we're ready for service, and then again, ready for the next day if you are closing. We also have expo duties, and then underneath that is our steps of service, which we'll also go over later um, at the end of the whole tour, but that's just on there as well, um, in case you have any questions on it. We have a bulletin um, about COVID. Um, not exactly sure uh, kind of what we're doing forward, because I know we're not doing the masks anymore, but basically just be clean, wash your hands, and be cognizant of people's face. Um, an emergency is always called 911. That is on the bulletin as well. 
Um, probably one of the most important things, if you're gonna take anything away from this bulletin board, is that we have an Employee of the Month nomination form. So when we went through um, an orientation about like creating truly memorable experiences for the members, if you see one of your fellow coworkers you know, doing that for um, a member um, or anybody else, I would highly recommend filling these out. It looks really good for a food and beverage department to have a bunch of nominees because it just shows that we are um, doing our best to create a great experience for the members. Um, so I highly recommend that. We'll have a little folder that you can just fill out the slip. But you put your name and the nominee's name, put it in there at the end of every month. We do a drawing and um, hopefully the more that we have, the more people can win. And it's uh, good for both who you nominate and for yourself as well. And then lastly, um, on here, we have just your rights as an employee, so you're welcome to be that as well. And that's it for the whole time. Um, we will also be posting pictures on certain setups as well to kind of help you guys in the beginning. So any pictures that we think might be useful, we'll be adding to it. Um, along with, well, like I mentioned, meetings earlier, there will be a clipboard there, and Karen will pay BEOs, which are banquet event orders, for meetings. So in the morning, the morning supervisor will kind of walk through you guys and that are working in the morning to go and set that up, break it down, all that good stuff as well. Welcome to the expo station. This is where all the magic happens. This is probably the calmest that you will ever see in the kitchen. <laughs> Normally there are a bunch of chefs back there and the salad bar over there and it is chaos and super loud and it can seem very over it can seem very um, what's it called? Overwhelming. Overwhelming, that's the word. Um, so when you come in, if you guys would just stand over there trying to stay out of the way because there's going to be a lot of servers who are coming over, picking up their tray, swinging it out. There's going to be chefs walking over here. I'm going to be moving all over here. There's going to be a bunch of tickets and stuff. So just try and stay out of the way. And then if you have a question or you need something, just come to me. Because all the chefs are super busy during the day. Um, I am your communication point. So if you need anything, you need something changed on one of your orders, you need something from the back, anything at all, just come to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, if it's dinner service, I'll probably have food runners here, which they are more than capable of helping you as well. Um, you should so never, sorry, you no, should you never talk to back of house, always talk to the expo, always, always, always. They will get mad or they will probably ignore you. So anything that you need, go through the expo, myself, that's it. They're not scary, they're just really, really busy. Yes, they are. yes. They're making yeah. all of your food. Yeah. Um, this is where you're going to find all of your plates and stuff, any cast irons, anything like that. You guys probably won't have to deal with that. As Angela mentioned, this is kind of your section. So here's all of your silverware, trays, all of the little dry goods that you need. Um, you can find more of that in dry storage. So if one of these runs out, you're more than welcome to go grab it. If you don't have time, let one of Other than that, the only other things you're going to be grabbing from back here is this right fridge is going to be filled with all of my expo stuff. So I'm going to have like extra ranches and carrots and apples and everything in between. But I stock that fridge every morning. I prep everything that I need. So if you guys need something from it, just let me know before you take it. Because if I think I have eight ranches and there's only three in there and I tell somebody I have eight, it's, it just, you know, snowballs from that effect. So just try and communicate. That's basically the key in here. Just tell me what you're doing and you're good. If I give you the thumbs up, you guys are good to go. So, yeah, that's about it. Can you go over the yeah. super bread station? Absolutely. So if you guys would follow me, this is our soup and bread station. We'll start with the soup station. So every morning, um, we're going to write on the board what the soup of the day is. It's going to change every day. And you can. there's usually going to be two soups in here. Um, you can ask the chefs or me which one is which. Um, I usually keep it on like a low simmer just so it doesn't burn. But this is where you're going to find all of your soup bowls. So these are cups of soup and then those are bowls of soup. Um, that's basically the soup station. And then the bread station is right here. This is where you're going to get all of your stuff for breads and spreads or anything like that. So what we normally do is we put a napkin in there. We put a little cup with hot water and a napkin in it. And what that lets it does, and once we turn it on, it helps humidify the bread. So it keeps it soft and 
warm. Um, yeah, you can find doilies. Um, you just speak up a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Right, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics of the bread station. So, yeah. Cool. There's just one more thing I'd like to mention. A good rule of thumb for this area in general, uh, no matter what specific area or department you're working in, you're going to be coming in throughout the kitchen. It's very important to communicate where you are walking and to help other people. So with trays, corner, behind. Not only if you are carrying the tray should you be saying that, but if you are seeing someone coming in, big tray coming in, behind three times three, that's three trays coming in. We communicate for other people as we communicate with each other. This is a very tight space and we are going to be having double the amount of people that are in here right now. So it's very important to communicate where you are walking behind, especially with the chef station right here. They're gonna be coming out with pots. They're gonna be saying hot pots. You need to be communicating with them when you're carrying your trays or if you see a tray, etc. So the communication is key everywhere here, but especially in the kitchen so we don't bump into each other and stuff like that. And loud. Louder than either. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your introduction, always acknowledge new tables within one minute of being seated with water. Very, very important. Even if you're busy, just acknowledging that you, you see them, that they're there is super important. So they don't feel like they're unheard or unseen because that's just always an issue. If you could just say, hi, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I'll be with you in just a moment. Come grab me. Anybody can help you out. I want all of us to be one team, one dream. Regardless if it's your section or not, all of us should be helping each other out at all times. All right. Hello, Mr. Smith. My name is Haley, and I will be taking care of you today, this morning, afternoon, evening, whatever you prefer. Um, we should always be using the member names at least three times while you're serving them. So usually um, for lunch, it's more walk-ins than reservations, even though we're really trying to encourage reservations for all meal periods. So usually you will know who is coming in. In the POS, we have an item lookup history, so you can look them up and see what they've ordered, what they don't like to do some suggestive selling, which is really awesome. That also makes them feel special, and they're like, oh my god, you already know what I like. That's amazing. Um, so that's something that's really cool. Um, actively greet members with a smile, make eye contact, speak clearly in a friendly manner, use member name whenever possible at least three times. Like I said, you should know who's coming in, so you can say hello, greet them, another time in the middle, and then when you're dropping off your check. Super, super easy. All right, today's soup is New England clam chowder, and we are featuring... A Monte Cristo sandwich. So I personally usually don't say the price because sometimes that might deter people away. I usually kind of just really sell that feature, you know, mouth watering. Just use some really descriptive words, even if you may have not tried it. Just you know, you guys know. You can say some nice, beautiful words um, to spice that up. The soup of the day is always going to be on the whiteboard in the kitchen, and if you forgot to check it, you can ask anybody. I'm sure one of us will probably know out of anyone that you ask. Uh, may I offer you, everyone, something to drink? Uh, two suggestions would be awesome. So you can say during lunch, maybe an iced tea lemonade, even a mimosa or Bloody Mary for dinner. Would you, don't try and suggest a house wine kind of upsell. Would you like a glass of Camus? Would you like a glass of <laughs> chasing Venus whatever it may be um, just kind of always suggesting selling and upselling is gonna bring you a higher check average and hopefully they will give you a gratuity you may or may not receive it in which a higher check average means a higher gratuity um, important in that statement as well you and everyone so verbiage is very important we don't say y'all we don't say folks we don't say guys any of that casual terminology I know it's very hard to take out of your vocabulary. It was difficult for me. Sometimes I slip, I will admit that, but if we can really try and say you all, everyone, everybody, ladies, gentlemen, get the gish. Awesome. All right, so when taking the drink order, you always wanna start with the lady. If there's kids at the tables, you wanna start with the kids, ladies to men. Usually when there's kids at the table, the parents are gonna kinda take their orders right away, say, hey, can I get a glass of milk, mac and cheese, boom, 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 all done. Um, but if there's not kids at the table, always start with the ladies first and then go around to the men, just for nice and polite mannerisms. <clears throat> Place a cocktail napkin to the right of each person as you take each order. So that means when you um, 
have the cocktail napkin on the table that we all can see that table's been touched and an order has been taken versus if there's no cocktail napkins on the tables then we're not sure if it's been touched or not and other people will probably go up to it just to make sure that if they need something so that's really nice when placing the cocktail napkin that look like this I would like to have the uh, emblem in front of them as well I know this might be kind of annoying to do but it just gives a nice extra touch when you drop it and then they faces you. Alrighty, at the final person, ask will everything be on one check today or separate check? Whether it's on one check or separate checks, obtain all member numbers and last names before leaving the table. You will need to enter a member before you enter orders in the POS. Very, very important. Not only do we have multiple members with last names, the same last name, so it's very important. Member name, number. Name, number, name, number. I cannot stress that enough. I know a lot of us have worked in regular restaurants so that when I started as a server here, it kind of took me to remember we need to ask for the member name and number. Like it said, you cannot put anything in the POS without a name or number, so that's very important. And you can always reiterate, just in case you didn't hear, you say, oh, Mr. Smith 456, perfect. And when you're at a table with multiple members, you're gonna want to try and get all those member numbers and last names. So when you do split the check later on, it's a lot easier. And the way we've set up our POS, you can put members on certain seat numbers. So when you split it, all you have to do is split by seat numbers and it does all the work for you and it is beautiful. All right, delivering the drinks. Always place the order within two minutes of taking the order. Always serve beverages within five minutes after they are ordered. Always serve from the right side of the person with your right hand. If not possible, serve with an open hand gesture. Yes, technically you're supposed to serve with the right and clear with the left. I'm not super, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, thank you, strict about it. I, um, I'm more of an open hand gesture, always hugging the member. And what that means, is you know when you're at a table with multiple people it gets really crowded so you always want to hug the member hug the member you never want to go like this because that's just impolite and yeah no so always hug the member super important all right Announce a drink name when placing in front of the guest, and that goes for food as well. So when you're dropping the drink, just reiterating um, what they ordered. You can also do that when taking the order, just to make sure there's no miscommunication and both you and the member are on the same page. Um, that also shares that, or shows them that you're just taking the extra step to make sure that you care and you, they feel special and heard and recognized and all that good stuff so really great just to double down repeat your orders back it just saves a lot of time later all right ask if any menu questions lunch are you ready to place an order would you like a few more minutes dinner are there any appetizers that can get you started for you if not you can just say the previous statement um, since we're all going to be doing menu tasting you can kind of pick your favorite things that you can always suggest selling like would you like to start off with the breads and spreads, um, lamb chops, whatever it may be. You can kind of pick those few items just to upsell and it just shows that you're knowledgeable about the menu as well. All right, take the food order. Has, every, has everyone decided or would you like a few more minutes? Would you like to get started with an appetizer? Kind of the same thing. Um, notice that everyone, not um, guys, stuff like that, you all, you'll kind of pick your go-to. I know it's gonna be hard, but let's just all try. That's super important verbiage here. Um, and then I'm not asking you to talk like robots because the members don't want that either. I highly encourage rapport with the members, just using certain words, especially over here at the Canyon, since we are the upscale dining facility on property is a little bit more important over here at the Versus the Meadow. All right, begin taking the food order with the kids first, then to ladies, then to gentlemen. Double checking coursing and seat numbers to ensure timely service. So when you're putting it in the POS, just reading over one more time to make sure you got your courses and seat numbers right. Because it really sucks when you put it in rush and you didn't course it out right and then you got to dart to the kitchen to be like, I messed up the course, that's supposed to be on second course, not first course. And then it's just a little snowball, yes. But, like, I know these, like, 
You can you can refer to the kids as sweeties, kiddos. I'm completely fine with that. Um, they're really really easy going. There's usually not so many kids over here anyways, um, but on Fridays we'll do long games for cool down, so there might be kids over here. Um, but yeah, addressing the kids like that is completely fine by me. Yeah, they also love that too. Good question. All right. Do, 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 do. Um, repeat any special orders back to the guests. That is, I cannot stress that enough. A lot of members will look at the menu and order something completely off, not on the menu, and just take parts of every other dish and make it their own. Um, we will do it, and that is fine, as long as you know you're checking with the expo to make sure we can do all that stuff. 99% of the time we will do it, I promise. Especially for those celiac <coughs> members and gluten-free, just always just um, repeat back the order because especially if it's something special, it will make sure uh, nothing got missed because I honestly have made that mistake and it's not that they'll be angry, it just, it'll just save more time if we just get it right the first time. All right. Um, thank you. I will get this in right away. What would be your response? Always place the order within two minutes of taking the order. And if you're busy and you got a bunch of stuff going on, I will annoy the crap out of all of you asking, what do you need? What can I do for you? I can put in orders. I can do drinks, whatever you need. I'm your go-to. Herman's your go-to. Any of the returners are your go-to. We are all here to help you. All right. Always be scanning your section. Your eyes move faster than your feet. Uh, check drinks, bread, utensils, pre-bus, remove empty glasses, offer another drink. You should always be scanning your section, but as well as the entire dining facility. So if you have a moment just to, you know, scan, walk the floor, help another person out, ask them, hey, what do you need? Is there anything I can do for you? I want all of us to be a team. Yes, you are responsible for your area, but I think everyone should be helping each other out as well. And pre-bussing is always super important because it's not fun bussing everything at the end when you can take it course by course, which is really easy. And especially, you know, if you get busy and someone else is helping you bussing in your section, they don't have to kind of do all the work. I don't want anyone to lean on anyone for a specific thing. I want all of us to be well-versed and all that stuff. Awesome. All right. Delivering the food. Begin with the ladies and repeat menu item with description when placing it in front of the guest, like I mentioned earlier. Always be open to the member. Use your left hand when serving from the left and your right hand when serving from the right. Like I said, just open gestures is very important. Pepper grinders with all salads. Um, the expo is really good at putting an extra pepper grinder on the tray when you run salads. So when we drop all the salads, you'll go around and ask if anyone would like pepper. Just a little nice thing to do. Uh, check on drinks again. And are there any additional items that I can bring you, bring for you at the moment, whatever it may be? Any questions? It all makes sense so far? Cool. All right, two minute two bike check. Does everything taste delicious? Is everyone enjoying? Or similarly positive phrased question. Not acceptable. Is everything okay? If the response is less than great, use a follow up question to find out what can be improved. Is there anything we can do to improve it? So saying is everything okay, it's saying that we're mediocre. Are we okay? No, we're freaking great. So we should say that we're amazing and great and kind of just suggest it because if you already put a negative connotation in their mind, then it's going to kind of snowball and think, oh, you know what, that actually really doesn't taste good or, you know, that wasn't like actually what I wanted, but it's fine. So just always reemphasizing positivity is usually will bring positivity everywhere else. Does that make sense? All right, check on drinks, read the table and alert the manager if guests seem disgruntled, less than thrilled about their experience or food. Please let me know if anything. I am really good at being on the floor. I personally don't like being in the office unless I have to be. I'm usually on the floor. I like talking to all of you and all the members. I'm pretty social myself. And plus it's just fun. I like moving on my feet. Um, and especially if food gets sent back, please tell me because I want to re-fire and rerun it myself. Not that I don't trust any of you, but I just want to make sure that I can talk to the member, converse with them, and it's usually a better look when the manager reruns that food anyways. Cool, cool. And Mark will usually be around and you can ask him as well if I'm not around for whatever reason. All right. Do, do, do. Clearing plates, clear plates from the right side with the right hand when possible or open hand gestures. Never leave one person eating alone. We don't want them to feel rushed. Any party less than six, wait until everyone is done to clear. Use two words. If you are sure they are done, say allow me. If unsure, may I. 
Um, I always go to May I because somebody can still have like the tiniest piece and they're still not done. So I just always say May I is my go to. Um, that rule is a little different because I have served eight tops with certain members that really don't want their plates in front of them and don't want to wait for everyone else. So I trust all of you to use your best judgment when you're in that situation to kind of read the table and kind of feel what the vibes are. Um, and like I said, if you use may I and they say no, it's totally fine. It's just a polite way of asking and then it's all good. And then we all know if the forks and knives are close together on the plate, usually that's mean when they're done. And if they're not done, the fork and knife usually won't be that way, but not everyone does it, but some people do. All right, reset the tables with any necessary flatware for the next course, proper forks, knives, staging with steak knives, all that good stuff. Um, upselling dessert. Always offer dessert at dinner service at the end of entrees, either by dropping off menus or verbally asking. Always have the menus in hand before asking because it's really embarrassing when if they do say yes, then you have to walk away, go get the menus, and then come back. So it just saves you an extra step anyways. Um, doing an after dinner drink, we have a really great drink called the steamer. It's Frangelico's Bailey and Clua with steamed milk and cinnamon on top. It's super yummy, so that's always a good one. So as you learn more of the menu and kind of what our port wines are, certain after dinner drinks, you can always pick a few and just kind of upsell again. Um, remember to offer after dinner drinks, ports, wine, scotch, uh, take the order, deliver coffee and tea right away, cream and sugar automatic. Preheat cups for hot beverages. Um, there is a hot water dispenser in the kitchen. It's always really nice just to do a quick little um, rinse with the hot water because if you put hot liquid in a cold cup, it's probably gonna be lukewarm while you, by the time you get to the table and it's just not a good look. They're like, oh, it's not hot. And you're like, sorry, I'll be right back. Um, but it really just that nice extra step just to serve it in a warm mug just gives it that little bit of elevated service. Uh, present tea box if guest does not require specific tea. So the girl showed you where the tea boxes are. So what you'll do is just set up a tray with your tea kettle, uh, teacup, lemon, honey, sugar, all that good stuff. And then bring out the tea box, present it super nicely so it looks all nice and you have everything right there. And they can just drop the tea bag and the key, tea kettle. Uh, super nice. All right. Final clearing. Remove all necessary plates, flatware, crumbs, or any un other unsightly things and for the exit present the ticket and think using the member name so you'll see it on the pos you should be knowing their name at this point so that's another time that you can use it thank you for joining us today this evening morning afternoon uh, thank you for joining us mr and mrs smith ladies gentlemen everyone you all we look forward to seeing you next time and have a great week or weekend pretty simple right so that pretty much touches on everything. Um, does it all kind of, I know a lot of us have worked in restaurants, so it's pretty the same, it's just slightly different verbiage, I would say. Does it all make sense? Do we have any questions or anything? No? Not it?